Hi everybody, welcome to our third video on trigonometric integrals. In this video, we're going to write down another trigonometric identity, or maybe even a couple, which are going to be useful in, that's right, solving more of these trigonometric integrals. So first, you need to recall the so-called double angle formula for cosine. Now the double angle formula for cosine is sometimes written down in one of maybe three ways. We're going to write it down one way and then I'll show you how you get the other two ways from the Pythagorean identity. So the base way, this is the way I remember, is that you get that the cosine of 2 theta is the cosine squared minus the sine squared of theta. Now, if you use the Pythagorean identity, you can replace either one of these cosines or sine squareds with something written in terms of the other. So for example, if I replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared, then I end up with 2 cosine squared minus 1. On the other hand, if I replace my cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, I end up with 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Alright, so this gives us a way of translating from cosines of a double angle into either sines or cosines or both but with squares. Now, for the purposes of integration, that's not so good. It's really easy to integrate things that look like this. You do a little teeny substitution, it's no problem. But as soon as you start putting squares on your cosines and sines, well, then we're looking at using all sorts of formulas or integration by parts or something. So we would much rather be going the other way. We want to convert squares of cosines or squares of sines into double angles. Why not? Why can't we do that? Well, we can. So, for example, if I take this formula, I can solve for cosine squared. What do I get? Well, you add 1, divide by 2, and we get cosine squared theta equals 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. Sweet. What if I solve for sine squared theta? Well, pretty much the same thing, except well, when I subtract this 1, I get a minus, but uh, i got to get rid of another minus. So things are going to switch around a little bit. I end up with 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. All right. So I now have two formulas, one that's going to let me replace cosine squared with some fu function of cosine of 2 theta, which will be easier to integrate, and one for sine squared that does almost the exact same thing, only now it's 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2. All right, let's see how we can use that. All right, so let's say I want to define an antiderivative for cosine squared. Hey, wait a second. We already did this one in the integration by parts video, right? Sure we did. We had to use that special I trick. That was pretty neat. We're going to see it works out a lot simpler here if we use this identity. If I replace cosine squared with 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2, well, okay, first, the over 2 looks like it might be complicated, but I can just pull it out. It's a constant. No problem. So I have 1 half antiderivative of, okay, actually it's 1 d theta, so that's just d theta, plus an antiderivative of cosine 2 theta d theta. And I am really, really happy about this because one, the first one, that's just theta. That's not a problem. What about the second one? Well, I'm trying to integrate cosine. I know that should turn into a sine. There's this little extra 2 theta in there, but you do a little u substitution. u equals 2 theta. All it's going to do is give you an extra half outside. So what do I end up with? A half sine of 2 theta. And there it is. Now you may be saying, wait, 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 hold on a second. That's not what we got in the integration by parts video. And you'd be right, sort of. What's the big difference? Well, here we rewrote it in terms of sine of 2 theta. There's a double angle formula for sine. And if we rewrote everything in terms of that, how would it change things? Well, I'd have theta plus a half sine of 2 theta becomes 2 sine theta cosine theta. So that's what I'll get down here. 2 sine theta, 
cosine theta. Okay, a half and a two are going to cancel, and I'm left with a half theta plus sine theta cosine theta, which that is what we got in the integration by parts video. All right, now the one thing we're missing, of course, plus our constants of integration. Okay, we always can tack those on at the end. All right, so this gives us another way of tackling some of these gnarly trigonometric formulas. When you have a cosine squared or a sine squared, you can rewrite it in terms of these formula.